<laughs> Is it to the world or just to your friends? Yeah, it's to the world. Nice. Hello, Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mexico. Yeah, you didn't go Facebook Live for me. Oh, yeah. I hate computers and everything. <laughs> so now, when we go Facebook Live to the world, it's really bad time to go check it. Sorry. <laughs> I just joking. <laughs> oh, I'm first, huh? Yeah, you're first. Yeah. We're in Genesis yeah. 43. And we can't take comments. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's where the camera's at. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Now the famine was still severe in the land. So when they had eaten all the grain they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little more food. But Judah said to him, the man warned us solemnly, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother along with us, we'll go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. Because the man said to us, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. Israel, why did, oh, sorry. Israel asked, <laughs> Why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man you had another brother? They replied. The man questioned us closely about ourselves and our family. Is your father still living? He asked us. Do you have another brother? We simply answered his questions. How were we to know, he would say, bring your brother down here? Then Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the boy along with me, and we will go at once, so that we and you and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I don't bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you all of my life. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, if it must be, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your bag and take them down to the man as a gift. A little balm and a little honey, some spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the amount of silver with you, for you must return the silver that was put back into the mouth of your sack. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the man at once. And may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, so that he will let your older brother and Benjamin come back with you. As for me, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver in Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare dinner. They are to eat with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened when they were taken to his house. They thought, We were brought here because of the silver that was put back into our sacks the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us as slaves and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's steward and spoke to him at the entrance to the house. Please, sir, they said. We came down here the first time to buy food. But at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks and each of us found his silver, the exact weight in the mouth of his sack. So we have brought it back with us. We have also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put our silver in our sacks. It's all, is that me? Mm -hmm. It's all right. He said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The steward took the men into Joseph's house. They gave them water to wash their feet and provided fodder for their donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon. 
because they had heard that they were to eat there. When Joseph came home, they presented to him the gifts they had brought into the house, and they bowed down before him to the ground. He asked them how they were, and then he said, How is your aged father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, Your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed low to pay him honor. As he looked, as he looked about the, and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. After he had washed his face, he came out and controlling himself said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, the brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with them by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is detestable to Egyptians. The men had been seated before him in the order of their ages, from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment. When portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else's, so they feasted and drank freely with him. Can we keep going? Sure. Now Joseph gave these instructions to the steward of his house. Fill the men's... Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. That's Joseph. Fill the men's sacks with as much food as they can carry, and put each man's silver in the mouth of his sack. Then put my cup, the silver one, in the mouth of the youngest one's sack, along with the silver for his grain. And he did as Joseph said. As morning dawned, the men were sent on their way with their donkeys. They had not gone far from the city when Joseph said to his steward, Go after those men at once, and when you catch up with them, say to them, Why have you repaid good with evil? Isn't this, isn't this the cup my master drinks from and also uses for divination? This is a wicked thing you have done. When he caught up with them, he repeated these words to them. But they said to him, Why does my Lord say such things? Far be it from your servants to do anything like that. We've brought back to you, we even brought back to you from the land of Canaan the silver we found inside the mouths of our sack. So why would we steal silver or gold from your master's house? If any of your servants is found to have it, he will die. And the rest of us will become my Lord's slaves. Is that me? Mm -hmm. Very well then. He said. Let it be as you say. Whoever is found to have it will become my slave. The rest of you will be free from blame. Each of them quickly lowered his sack to the ground and opened it. Then the steward proceeded to search, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. At this, they tore their clothes. Then they all loaded their donkeys and returned to the city. Joseph was still in the house when Judah and his brothers came in, and they threw themselves to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What is this you have done? Don't you know that a man like me can find things out by... Uh, divination? Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, divination. Divination? Yeah. What can we say to that, my lord? Judah replied. What can we say? How can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. Uh, we are now, my lord's slaves. Uh, we are ourselves and the one who was found to have the cup. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man who was found to have the cup will become my slave. The rest of you, go back to your father in peace. Then Judah went up to him and said, Please, my lord, let your servant speak a word to my lord. Do not be angry with your servant, though you are equal to Pharaoh himself. My lord asks his servants, Do you have a father or brother? And we answered, We have an aged father, and there is a young son born to him in his old age. His brother is dead. And he is the only one of his mother's sons left, and his father loved him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me so I can see him for myself. And we said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father. If he leaves him, his father will die. But you told your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will not see my face again. 
When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him what my Lord had said. Then our father said, go back and buy a little more food. But we said, we cannot go down. Only if our youngest brother is with us, will we go. We cannot see the man's face unless our younger brother is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. One of them went away from me, and he said, "And I said, he has surely been torn to pieces. And I have not seen him since. If you take this one from me too, and harm comes to him, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in misery. So now if the boy is not with us, when I go back to your servant, my father, and if my father, whose life is closely bound up with the boy's life, sees that the boy isn't there with us, he will die. Your servants will bring his gray head down to the grave in sorrow. Your servant guaranteed the boy's safety to my father. I said, if I do not bring him back to you, I will bear the blame before you, my father, all my life. Now then, please let your servant remain here as my Lord's slave in place of the boy. Let the boy return with his brothers. How can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? No, do not let me see the misery that would come upon my father. Are we still going? Mm -hmm. Joseph makes himself known. Then Joseph can no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Okay. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt, and now... Do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land and for the next five years, there will not, there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then... It was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord over, lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and your grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your <clears throat> and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw oh, his arms. I, I mean, that's for oh, and, so. and then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. When the news reached Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, "Oh, this is Pharaoh." Mom, do you want to be the Pharaoh? Yeah, it's a pleasure. Sure. Tell your brothers, do this, load your animals, and return to the land of Canaan, and bring your father and your families back to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you can enjoy the fat of the land. You are also directed to tell them, do this, take some carts from Egypt for your children and your wife, and get your father and come. Never mind about your belongings, because the best of all Egypt will be yours. So the sons of Israel did this. Joseph gave them carts as Pharaoh had commanded, and he also gave them provisions for their journey. 
To each of them he gave new clothing, but to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver and five sets of clothes. And this is what he sent to his father, 10 donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other provisions for his journey. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they were leaving, he said to them, uh, Let me again. Yeah. Don't quarrel on the way. <laughs> so, they, so they went up out of Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is still alive. In fact, he is ruler of all Egypt. Jacob was stunned. He did not believe them, but when they told him everything Joseph had said to them, <clears throat> then when he saw the carts Joseph had sent to carry him back, the spirit of their father Jacob revived, and Israel said, I'm convinced my son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Shall we continue? Sure. So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached for Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob. Oops. Here I am. He replied. I am God, the God of your father. He, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Then Jacob left Beersheba, and Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the cars that Pharaoh had sent to transport him. They also took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in Canaan, and Jacob and all his offspring went to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. These are the names of the sons of Israel, Jacob and his descendants, who went to Egypt. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben. We, um, we, yeah, we don't, oh, we yeah. might just read the 12 tribes of Israel for time's sake. You want me to read them? Yeah. Okay, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben, um, Hanak, Palu, Hazron, and Carmi. Uh, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shal, the son of a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah, Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. Um, the sons of Perez, Hezron, and Hamul. The sons of Issachar, Tola, pa Pua, Jashub, and Shimron, the sons of Zebulun, Sered, Elon, and Jel Jalil. These were the sons of Leah, born to Jacob in Padan Aram, besides his daughter, Dinah. These sons and daughters of his were 33 in all. The sons of Gad, Zaphon, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Ered, Dai, and Ereli. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah. Their sister was Sarah, the sons of Bariah, Heber, and Malpiel. These were the children born to Jacob by Zilpah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Leah, 16 in all. Um, the sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. In Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by Asenath, daughter of Potipharah, priest of Om. The sons of Benjamin, Bella, Becker, Eshbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupin, Huppim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, 14 in all. The sons of Dan, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam. These were the sons born to Jacob by Bilhah, whom Laban had given to his daughter, Rachel, 7 in all. Yeah. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were his direct descendants, not counting his son's wives, numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family which went to Egypt were 70 in all. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of 
him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die. This I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household, who were living in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds, they tend livestock, and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, what is your occupation, you should answer. Your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Do you guys want to continue? Maybe yes. one more? Fine with me? Sure. Okay. Joseph went and told Pharaoh, My father and brothers, with their flocks and herds and everything they own, have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose... Uh, wait, is that the he, narrator? Oh, yeah. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds. Is that what I say? Um, no, it's them well, answering. Brothers. brothers. Um, Mom, you want to be the brothers? Sure. Your servants are shepherds. They replied to Pharaoh. Just as our fathers were. They also said to him, We have come to live here a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now, please let your servants settle in Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. And if you know of any among them with special abilities, put them in charge of my own livestock. Then Joseph brought his father back in and presented him before Pharaoh. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked, how, how old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, Huh? The years of my pil pilgrimage are 130. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pil pilgrimage of my father. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the district of Ramesses, as Pharaoh directed. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, I think Ramesses, Ramesses. Ramesses. what I've heard. Yeah. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their children. That, that actually is a really good place to stop. Okay. Um, so let's... Uh, we can actually finish up the rest of Genesis next time in two weeks. <laughs> I've been holding in a sneeze for a while. Okay, <laughs> brother. No, thank you. Gotcha. Well, uh, well, let's check things with God and see if anybody has any questions or any comments. Christophe Way. What's up, brother? We're all waving guys. <laughs> um, Those are all your friends, huh? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Um, any comments, questions, concerns about the um, passage? Any, anything? Um, my favorite part is when uh joseph like breaks down then he tells his brothers yeah you know the the true purpose of what why everything happened and it was so that he could go ahead of them and you know give them the the food and the land so they don't die off in the famine mm, yeah yeah it was good 
that's my favorite part too because I, I it reminds me all the time um, that God even when e there is evil things that are planned against us, God's purposes for our lives are for good, and His purpose and plans are always above and beyond any human um, plan for us. Yeah, and that is not good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, gives weight to the whole do not be discouraged, do not be afraid, for I'm with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was Benjamin a brother that was born after they sold Joseph? N no, it, it was... Or was he just the second youngest, the he, one above Joseph? Yeah, he was him. They were from the same mother. And so I was kind of reading, like, what's a major theme? They ask that all the time in seminary. What's what's the major theme here? Well, the major theme throughout the, the Old Testament is it's all about the heart. I would say during these passages, it's all about closeness and family mm -hmm. and kin. So Joseph grew up, and every day he was with his younger brother. They were raised by the same mother. They did everything together. And all their older brothers, they were out in fields already, and they were hunting and stuff. And it was just him and his little brother, and they were, probably there were times when they were just duking it out with, with themselves. You know, their mom went away. There's big older brothers running around, and and um, they probably relied on each other much like your kids rely on each other. So when they get older and they get in different, you know, positions of power and money and esteem, they're gonna have some. Uh, they're gonna favor each other. You know, just that that closeness and. I think that that is definitely a major theme here, um, just how close we get with our brothers and sisters. And yeah, do you have anything? Well, that explains why you know he broke down. Yeah, over his little brother. Yeah, I haven't seen you in so long. Oh. <laughs> okay. And which is funny because Reuben was the one that stuck up for him when they were going to kill him, and Reuben, yeah. So I, I thought for a while that they were the same brother, but it's it's not. Um, was Reuben like one of the middle, one of the kids in the middle? Yeah, yeah, he was probably one of the older brothers. One of the older ones. Yeah, and that makes sense though, because he had sway among the older brothers. You know, they didn't kill him; they threw him down a well. He was going to rescue him later. Um, and it it just goes to show every time the Bible says it, God's letting us know there's an honorable mention for this guy. These guys aren't, you know. And, and that's true in our lives, in our history books. When we get to heaven, God's going to talk to stories about this. Everybody was this way, but you, like everybody at work was one way, but you were a different way on in heart. And it's all about bringing the insides out. And that's why Joseph was where he was at. So he had a good heart. God bless that. So Reuben had a good heart, too. Another thing, um, what did anybody else have any comments? No, mm -hmm. that's Mom, Mom, did you have any comments? I... Uh, no, no, I was just thinking of a Bible verse. I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, and I can't remember where it's at. Did you Jeremiah it 29. Is, but... <laughs> you got it, Rika? Jeremiah 29, 11. Right? Yeah. Yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. And this was after Israel messed up and went into exile. Was going into going into exile. I feel like that so every day. <laughs> What's up, Mom? Oh, I was just gonna say, so that to me really relates to this part of the Bible, even though it was in a different time period, because I see God's plan and purpose was to prosper mm -hmm. the um, line of Israel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got to say it. I got to say it. 
you you reminded me of something that I've been wanting to say, Chris. Um, so um, it's funny. I pulled up the map, and we're about to go into Exodus. And so God's plan is to take Abraham. Remember when Abraham God called Abraham um, mm -hmm. out from Egypt? And I was thinking a modern day example. Well, Egypt is like New York, and God is calling. Imagine God calling one person out of New York and going, I'm going to make you the ideal nation for all other nations, and New York is going to serve you. And then he takes them out west, going across the Lewis and Clark Trail. But let's say the, um, the promised land is in Texas or something, and they go past Texas over to the west coast, and then he, Joe, when they're brought in slavery, he goes back again over Texas, back into New York to be part of New York again. That's kind of the path. So I, I, I put those maps. And if I had to, from reading it, I think God's original intention was to, um, whew, was to um, put Abraham in the, through Israel. Um, he had him cross over um, from Egypt. And then, but then it's just like every time Israel messes up and they're in exile, they they mess up and suddenly they're back under the rule of a bigger nation. So all the brothers that get murder in their heart, uh, except for two of them, they were righteous. And God's like, well, I'm going to take you back to teach you a lesson. I'm going to put you back. We're going to cross the promised land Israel again. We're going to put you in the Nile Delta, which is um, in Egypt. It's the most prosperous part in Egypt on the east side. And that's where we get the setup for the Exodus. Because they stay in Egypt, but God's original plan was to keep them away from Egypt and have them their own nation mm -hmm. and settle. And uh, one thing we learned in geography class that fertile soil determines population growth more than anything else. And so here in the Willamette Valley, we have really fertile soil, so it's just going to boom, you know, and explode. Um, but out in arid places, they just don't. And Japan's a weird exception, but. Um, Weird in a good way. Um, but uh, so that was God's original plan, but they messed up and they go back under slavery of Egypt and there's a remnant and Joseph is the remnant and he's the righteous person that's called. And we see this throughout the rest of the time. Moses, uh, the they turn away with the golden calf. There's a remnant of people that survive. God takes Joshua through the promised land and things like that. So they're missing their call because of sin. Um, and in some, every time we sin, we miss an opportunity to do, to do good. And we're always trying to do as good as we can. Um, but it's, it's God really does have good and awesome plans for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the key is when we're not perfect, we just okay, we put that behind us and we just go forward from where we're at. They did the best they could in Egypt and then they thrived. Um, and then we get to see a couple hundred years later, Satan uses that against them right now they have a really good pharaoh um and then the pharaoh's stoked that they're there you know is, comes with welcome arms is the most powerful man in the world person in the world gender aside and uh um and they're good and they're getting along but eventually satan's working on that big nation trying to get that nation to to press israel he knows that israel is their the chosen god's chosen nation so he's trying to wipe them out early um, just like all the, you know, like all the good stories. Um, there's a prophecy of a son being born. Let's kill everybody in the land. And and even when Christ came, they tried to kill everybody in the land of Christ. You know, that uh, Herod. Mm -hmm. um, so, so um, it actually, if, if, so I guess what I'm saying is that we see this pattern a lot, but if Israel hadn't sinned and, become murderous and, and decided on the side of anger. We see Satan in the background messing up God's plan. But it really is true that God's plan does triumph. God is in control that Satan meddles. Um, yeah. So I thought that was an interesting uh, thing. They're just crossing back and forth. You know, Moses is like, all right, we're going to go Exodus. We're going to go where? And God's like, to, to Israel. He's like, we crossed that place twice in our ancestry. What? And it does like, yeah, I was just done the right thing the first time. Yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. but uh, then you get the wandering through the desert. And... 
Which you will lead us through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, we only we only have three more chapters. It kind of another thing to recognize is that God follows family lines, and the most righteous person kind of takes up the family heroics. You know, does the great things for God. And in the same way, in our lives, we take up our family's call. We take, you know, my mom and my dad and everyone in my family. They've supported me my whole life, and they put their hopes on me. And the reason we have our older generation putting their hopes on us is because. You know, we're going to go carry on and do awesome things for God, um, and rightfully so. And, and God will bless us when our hearts are right, and he will, he will correct us, sometimes harshly, um, when we're wrong. But um, it's good to keep courage and make, make use of everybody's hope uh, by keeping hope in hard times. Mm -hmm. I think that that's that kind of encouraged me through the last couple of years that were hard in life. I, I kept hope because others are putting their hope in me. And if I can take heart, I should. And that's a lot. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> we at least spend this long thinking about it. I get it all built up. And I got a <laughs> <laughs> sermon. I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> I think for me individually, it's just good to know that even if I am wandering and maybe backtracking in my life and, you know, I could be someplace different or I could have, could have made it better, but for choices that I've made along the way, that God still has a purpose and a plan for me and it is for good oh, yeah. and nothing is going to thwart his plans for me not even me yeah yeah so i have a reason to hope and keep going yeah because god has good things in store for me yeah and and i think that that also adds to mom um not trying to be perfect um it's not that we can be the messiah the perfect messiah but instead we rely back on christ and he makes up for you know the weaknesses um and so we when it's kind of like rich mullen's song if i stand let me stand on the promise that you will carry me through if i can't let me fall on the grace which brought me to you um, mm -hmm. let me fall on christ he, he was the perfect um redeemer and and we through him we, we come back to god mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to do, though, when you're going for holiness and you're so far away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if it wasn't for Christ and his, his grace, <laughs> there wouldn't be anything anyway. Yeah. And we will never be perfect. Right, yeah. You know, try as you might, you will never be perfect. Mm -hmm. If you were, there would be no reason for Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christ got some competition. That's something my dad always tells me. Yeah. Like your mom was just saying. Yeah. Getting wise. You're wise, mom. Wise. Well, if nobody else has any comments, we can pray and close. And uh, finish. So, um, does anybody want to close? Oh well. Oh, your mom's turn. Oh, <laughs> off the hook. Thank you. <laughs> Good. You want me to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the for your word and for your wisdom and most of, most of all for your grace. Um, Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us um, to take away our sins. So that one day we can live in heaven with you. Um, I just thank you that you sustain us, that you heal us, that you teach us, that you are with us always, that you never abandon us, that you are our strength and our courage. Father, I just thank you for the time that we have that we can gather together. I thank you mm -hmm. for friendships that we're making and um, for 
words that we're sharing that will encourage us um, throughout our lives and through this next uh, time until we meet again. Um, I thank you for um, a list of the people that can't be with us today, um, that you will watch over them and keep them safe and uh, let them know how very near they are, mm. you are to them, and how very much you love them. Um, and all this I ask and thank you in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And God bless America. <laughs> we need it. Yeah. America. 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 Thank you, God, for America. Bye, Facebook. Was it you?